With training camp and joint practices in the rearview mirror, it is time to talk cut candidates. Who could be on the chopping block for your Seattle Seahawks when the 53-man roster ultimately gets revealed here in the coming weeks? I got not one, not two, not three, not four, five. Surprise cut candidates that we'll get to here on this edition of Seattle Seahawks today. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. The cap situation, according to OverTheCap.com right now, stands at $10.7 million. Now, we're still waiting on the Connor Williams situation to see what exactly that final number will ultimately be. So it's going to be less than 10.7. But nonetheless, the Seahawks don't have a ton of cash at the moment. And on today's show... I am going to reach into my wallet, and I am going to find close to $10 million for the Seahawks to free up to potentially spend on other things, whether that's extensions, whether that's a trade, free agency, whatever it may be. We're going to help the Seahawks out, and to quote Dave Ramsey, we're going to make the money work for you, folks. Before we reveal our list, I need some help, folks. Game day is almost here. You know what we do on game days here on the channel. We spam us. It's our rallying cry for your Seattle Seahawks. Spam S in the chat. Make it like you're at Lumen Field today. I want to see no less than 300 S's in the chat for your Seahawks. Spam it in the comment section. We'll get started here with today's show. Let's begin with Daryl Taylor. And I know that DT had a very good joint practice session. But let's be honest here. DT is a one-dimensional player. He can get after the quarterback. He can put up big sack numbers. Led the Seahawks in sacks in 2022 with nine and a half. But Mike McDonald is not looking for one-dimensional players. He's looking for guys that can do multiple things. And quite frankly, I don't blame him for that. You are looking for guys, when it comes to your edge rushers, that can go after the quarterback, that can stop the run, and can play low coverage. Well, Daryl Taylor's got one-third of that figured out. The other two things just simply aren't going to fly with what Mike McDonald wants to do. If the Seahawks were to cut Daryl Taylor, you're looking at potential cap savings of $3.2 million. And in all likelihood, Daryl Taylor probably isn't going to be relied upon in the edge rusher rotation that much. With the emergence of Derek Hall, Boye Mafia expected to take a big step, Eugene and Wosu, of course, coming back. you got Draymond Jones moving over that side. Daryl Taylor just might be the odd man out. Whether it's cutting him or trading him and getting some draft capital, the Seahawks might be better off just moving on from Daryl Taylor. A 2020 second-round pick out of the University of Tennessee. The real UT, right? Right, Big Tex? Yes, he agrees. Led the Seahawks in sacks in 2022 with nine and a half. And we talk about opportunity. This guy's got plenty of chances. 49 games Played in his career with 13 starts. He got benched by Pete Carroll multiple times uh, over his tenure so far in Seattle. He just hasn't done enough. And he's got to show more like he did in joint practices. And there's the numbers, as you can see there, from Daryl Taylor. Last year, a bit of a down year, just five and a half sacks. Uh, Had that big season in 2022. But Daryl Taylor's got work to do if he ultimately wants to make this 53-man roster. Your chance to be John Schneider here on Seahawks today. Should the Seahawks cut Daryl Taylor? Type C for cut, K for keep. Wait in the comments section and let us know. Next up is John Radigan. No, not the uh, former Fox Sports Net host, John Radigan. No, we're talking about the linebacker, John Radigan, for the Seahawks. And personally, I want to keep Radigan around, but here is what I am looking at, folks. I don't want to pay John Radigan three-plus million dollars. I simply don't. And you look at the numbers there, he's not worth $3 million. So I would like to see John Radigan take a bit of a pay cut. I think whether it is cutting him straight up and then making him sign a lesser deal or negotiate to take a pay cut, whatever it may be, there's no reason why you should be paying John Radigan $3 million. He should be playing for just over a million dollars. And if you just cut him straight up, you're looking at saving $3 million, potentially speaking. And I know the Seahawks have a big weakness when it comes to depth at the linebacker spot. They could use a guy like John Radigan, uh, who's got a lot of experience, 36 career games played. He's primarily been used as, as a special teams guy. Uh, but John Radigan, it's got to be less than what you're making right now. Seahawks cannot afford to be paying $3 million to John Radigan, especially when you look at the numbers uh, of what he has to show for. Just really hasn't. Done much. 17 tackles last year, 
no sacks, no tackles for loss, no forced fumbles, no fumble recoveries. So, John Radigan, you can stay, but it's got to be for the right price. Should John Radigan take a pay cut? If you were John Radigan, would you be willing to take that pay cut, or would you say, go F yourself, John Schneider? What would you do? Should Radigan take that pay cut? Type Y for yes, N for no, let me know. Byron Murphy jerseys on sale now. Chatsports.com slash Murphy. Free shipping available. Men's and women's options. Got the home jersey, the road jersey, the throwback alternate. Go see for yourself. He'll wear the number 9 at once. Just add a 9 to that one. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Free shipping available. Chatsports.com slash Murphy. Next up is Mike Jackson. Unfortunate uh, that Mike Jackson finds himself at this point. It did not have to be this way, but, folks, here we are at this point. Uh, He's been banged up a bit as of late, so he's been missing out on reps throughout training camp, and it's allowed these other guys to step up. Trey Brown has looked very good throughout training camp. We've seen DJ James, Nehemiah Pritchett, some of these other young cats uh, start to show their worth. And at this point, it's looking like Mike Jackson, you could potentially move on from him, trade him to a team that needs a starting corner because he's a starting caliber corner in this league and get some assets potentially and save about $1.1 million at this juncture. Mike Jackson's a fine football player. But as we've said many times on this program, Mike Jackson is not an investment in the Seahawks. All right? The Seahawks, if you were to think of the Seahawks like a stock market, all right, they bought their stock in their young players. They haven't bought stock in in Mike Jackson. Mike Jackson was just supposed to be a short-term solution. In fact, I'm surprised that he's still here, to be honest, at this juncture. Uh, Mike Jackson, plenty of experience, 38 career games played, 21 starts, started every game in 2022, previously with the Lions and the Patriots, also with, with the Cowboys before that. But with these other guys around, I think the Seahawks can do better than Mike Jackson. Here's the numbers from Mike Jackson. You can see last year didn't start nearly as many games as he got beat up by Trey Brown there in the preseason. Went from 75 tackles to 34, 12 pass breakups to five, one interception to none. Uh, Mike Jackson, it, it seems like the clock is ticking on his time with the Seahawks here. If you had to pick one to keep, I'm keeping Trey Brown. One of them's probably going. Loser leaves town. Which one you rather keep? Type Trey for Trey Brown. Type Mike for Mike Jackson. Let me know. Seahawks Today continues to bring you the best Seahawks coverage you won't find anywhere else. With our daily news and rumors, live shows here on the channel. We also have our watch parties, Q&A mailbags, all of it's in one place. I'll be live on Saturday, me and Big, Big Tex, for the Seahawks Watch party against the Titans. We'll see you then. Subscribe now for free, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. All right, this one's going to be definitely a surprise to some people. Kayvon Wallace makes our list of potential surprise cut candidates for the Seahawks. And this is a guy we haven't talked about much this offseason after he signed. Uh, He's kind of just disappeared. But Kobe Bryant looked very good in that preseason game, and the talk has been – over the last couple of days since that preseason game, that if the Seahawks are going to play three safeties, Kobe Bryant's the favorite to be that third safety. And so that leaves kind of Kayvon Wallace just trying to figure out what to do. And he might not have a spot, especially when you look at some of the other guys that are competing there. And the Seahawks potentially could be in the free agent market to bring in another safety. If you cut Kayvon Wallace, you're looking at saving about one3 million dollars. Kayvon Wallace has experience playing both corner and safety, but he hasn't played either spot necessarily at a high level. He's still kind of unknown of reaching his full potential at this point. 62 career games played, 19 starts there, and uh, we'll see. He might be buying time here in Seattle. His numbers last year in Tennessee, 89 tackles, six pass breakups, one interception, And uh, no forced fumbles there uh, last season. That was definitely the best season that he's had in his career, a breakout season at that there in Tennessee. One more name to get to, but first, who's a player the Seahawks should cut? We've named a few already. Got one more to go. Weigh in. Let us know who you think the Seahawks should move on from. I know some of you are going to say D. Eskridge. I didn't include him today because it wouldn't be a surprise. I think we're all anticipating that D is going to be out of here. Weigh in. Let me know.
Last on our list, Artie Burns at the corner position. Artie Burns makes this list, and for similar reasons to Mike Jackson, of being the odd men out, where the Seahawks have younger guys, they have pieces they've invested in. Artie Burns was just kind of hanging around, and he's been solid in camp. He's had a good look, but we've seen that over the years he struggled on the field in the moments that matter. When they needed him, Artie Burns hasn't shown up. So I've seen this song and dance before. He's looked good in practice, but what can he do in an actual game? Not much. Cap savings, you're looking at saving about a million dollars if you move on from Artie Burns. And you might be able to trade him with his experience. 86 career games played, 39 starts over his career. Somebody looking for a backup corner, somebody to compete for a starting spot. Artie Burns might be your guy, just not the guy for the Seahawks. He's definitely not winning a starting job in Seattle, I can tell you that much. The numbers, uh, you can see... Not a whole lot to offer there. 14 games played last year, 23 tackles, two pass breakups. Uh, didn't play hardly at all in 2022. And uh, 2021 had uh, 23 tackles, six pass breakups. Was out for all of 2020 with the Bears with the torn ACL. Thanks for joining us here on Seahawks today. If you made it to the end of today's video, do you know what that means? That means you are a real one. The real ones are the people that are here with us through thick and thin. We appreciate you, folks. Spam real one in the comments section if you made it to the end of today's show. I'm Tyler Jones. We'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.